Hi, and thanks for joining us here at Wowza. My name is Justin Miller. I am the video and webinar producer, and I am here with Barry Owen, the VP of Solutions Engineering. Barry, how's it going? Good. How are you doing today, Justin? I'm okay. I really want to talk to you about WebRTC, and we will, but I'm going to ask you a first <laughs> question before that. I mean, right now, it's 2020, and uh, big question some people want to know is, is Flash dead? Is Flash gone now? Are people even using it anymore? <laughs> um, so this is this is an interesting question, right? So there's a lot of there's a lot of people who equate RTMP with Flash, and they're actually not the same thing. Um, so Flash being dead, yes, for the most part, it will be yanked out of all the browsers um, pretty much by the end of the year. So Flash as a mechanism to play back an RTMP stream in a browser is effectively dead. RTMP is not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Um, there's a ton of video processing workflows that leverage RTMP all over the place. That may not include anymore, you know, that last mile of, of getting it to the browser and playing in the browser, but RTMP is used a ton for um, video encoders streaming into a, a processing server, streaming between an origin and an edge, you know, there's a ton of places where RTMP is useful and will continue to be used, even though there are some other protocols that are that are creeping up, WebRTC being one of them that can take the place of that, you know, things like SRT, WebRTC. Okay. But as you're saying this, you're, you are stating that uh, RTMP really isn't used when it comes to the playback, right? So how does that affect the, the latency of things? Yeah, so our RTMP was actually a very efficient, low latency kind of bitstream based protocol. So, you know, you could get three to five seconds of latency at reasonably high scale using an RTMP based workflow. And, you know, that's that's effectively gone now. Um, there, are, there are some proprietary people doing some tricks and things like that. But obviously that requires custom players and lots of other hassles and a lot of people just don't want to deal with. So <clears throat> this is where things like to a certain extent low latency to last low latency dash and webrtc really have a place um you know kind of a growing place in this video workflow to address this gap okay let's let's uh pull it back for a second i i admit i i had just talked about it in terms of uh egress or uh, going to the player right now mm -hmm. um, maybe we should start with uh the ingest point which is you know we're, we're what we were just saying right now is our tmp is used pretty heavily when it comes to ingest people are say streaming right. to youtube to facebook to twitch and they're using our tmp or our tmps right now are there other alternatives out there for streaming out to these services or or our mm -hmm. services sometimes <laughs> Uh, a lot of the social services, like you mentioned, do, they don't really have a lot of alternatives to RTMP or RTMPS. Um, you know, some of them may may begin to start accepting HLS or Dash themselves, and I suspect some of them will start to accept WebRTC, um, and potentially some of them would would be able to accept something like an SRT stream as well. So, yes, um, maybe. But right now, yeah, I mean, the bulk of these services really like to see RTMP coming in because it's a it's a well known stable format that they know what to do with. But that being said, I mean, there are solutions like SRT out there that other companies that aren't. Oh, absolutely! I mean, for a for a for a point to point solution, SRT is very effective. It's low latency. It handles packet loss well. And, and there's a lot of, you know, sports encryption and things like that. So SRT is a very viable thing for, for, for many things, whether it be that first mile or kind of that point to point model. And where does WebRTC fit into all that? So, so WebRTC has, has several benefits really, right? So probably one of the biggest ones is on the ingest side is that, you know, WebRTC doesn't require an encoder. You know, you can you can fire up a web page, you can broadcast WebRTC from your desktop, you know, in a matter of seconds. It doesn't require the user to do anything. They don't have to set anything up. You know, it it kind of just it kind of just works, and it's 
you know, there's pluses and minuses to that, right? You can, you have a little less control over the quality it's putting out and things like that. But, you know, on a, on a good network, WebRTC makes a very solid ingest mechanism to get content from a browser uh, in. So it sounds like when we're dealing with, let's say a laptop, it's a great solution in order to uh, send that stream out. Not everybody wants to set up OBS or, or something else to, to be able to capture their webcam and encode it and send it off to their favorite destination. So WebRTC is a, is a real nice solution for that. And it's, you know, it's very low latency as well. So is it, it a mobile has, solution? Uh, in some cases, it certainly works well in apps on mobile. And then in many cases on browsers, but not all. So it's a little harder to pin down and I don't have the matrix in front of me to, to tell you what works where. Um, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little um, less pervasive on mobile than it is on desktops currently. Let's talk about it on that egress side when it comes to uh, now playing back. Uh, so as we were saying, uh, we don't have flash. People aren't using RTMP. I, I believe the reasons were because of security issues, right? Yeah. So the the you know if you had the flash plugged in your browser, chances are you were you got very tired of getting a flash update notification because somebody had found another hack or another backdoor or something you know that was that was breaking flash and allowing people to do bad things in your browser and getting to your computer and you know those it, it it became you know a very well-established attack vector into browsers. So that's certainly one of the reasons. And right. so much so yeah, that there's, you didn't even put it on an iPhone, right? Right, never never made it to iPhones. And really the browser vendors never built it in. It was always a plugin. It was always something that had to be added on. And there was continuing backlash of having to, you know, having to install a plugin, having to download it, get it working, making sure you had permissions to install it if your corporate laptop, whatever. So it's just a lot more of a hassle than firing up a web page and being able to see, you know, an HTTP based stream or a WebRTC stream. So uh, all that being said, then, uh, as we're looking at solutions for egress, uh, is WebRTC the answer? WebRTC is a great answer where it's a good fit. So, you know, it's a great answer for one to one video streaming. It's a it's a pretty good answer for one to few or small, what I'll call small many, um, or few to few. And, you know, it becomes a little more difficult to scale WebRTC to a higher level. There are, you know, typically you scale video leveraging a CDN, which is a network of computers that allows you to distribute things all over the world, you know, at very, very high scales. Uh, there are a handful of WebRTC CDNs, but in general, they're a little more expensive. It's a little more labor to set them up. So while it's technically possible to send out a WebRTC stream to a, a high number of people, it's it's more challenging. It's you know a little less stable and and probably more expensive than traditional streaming. Okay. So just to um, reiterate what we've been talking about, when it comes to WebRTC, you're telling me one, it's it's browser based. It's built into the browser, so it can be great on computers. Maybe not so much on uh, mobile devices, but well, still I'll say I'll say most mobile devices. But you got to be yeah you know, yeah. You know, there's obviously there's a myriad of Android devices, and while WebRTC usually works reasonably well in Chrome, in like some some other companies' versions of Chrome or some other companies' browsers they provide, maybe it doesn't work as well. Um, it's technically supported in iOS and Safari only, but it doesn't necessarily support everything. So, you know, it's it's a little more of a, of a broader landscape. I think you're seeing it stabilized fairly well on, you know, desktop browsers. And I think you'll continue to see it, you know, all things supported in all browsers across mobile as, as we grow. Okay. And it is a great real-time protocol, as you said. Uh, on the drawback side, as you pointed out, it's not great in terms of scalability. It's really more of a, it was designed for more of a one-to-one -one as opposed to one-to-one. Well, one-to-one -one. One -one or few-to-few or few. example, you know, there, there's various ways you can, you can set up WebRTC to work in better environments. I mean, it's for, for a one-to-one, few-to-few, few-to-hundreds, um, 
you know, it, it works quite well. Then, you know, one of the things some folks do is they will, they will take a WebRTC um, primary workflow and set up a, an HLS or dash secondary workflow, which, which will allow you to get, get a hybrid. So maybe you have a handful of people or maybe a, maybe it's a hundred people who who truly need that low latency access for whatever reason. Maybe they're interacting, um, whatever. And then you have a passive audience that doesn't necessarily need that true real time low latency experience. And that's a nice way that you can kind of get the best of both worlds and give a good a good experience to the people who need low latency for whatever reason. And then you know for the people who are just kind of passively consuming. Um, they can leverage the the more standard, easily scalable HLS or Dash stream. So, all that being said, I'm very curious uh, how we are currently supporting WebRTC and whether we're capable of some of these hybrids or other uh, solutions when it comes to uh, assisting in that scaling. Yeah, absolutely. The, the you know we've come a long way with our WebRTC support in both streaming engine and cloud. You know, previously to a few months ago, you know, cloud didn't really deal with WebRTC at all. So you can now you can ingest WebRTC into cloud. So we we support it as a as an inbound format, and then we'll deliver that stream. You know, or traditional HLS going yeah. out. Uh, with Engine, you obviously have a lot more options. Um, we can take in WebRTC, we can output WebRTC and we can mix and match, right? So we can take in pretty much any format and deliver it as WebRTC, or we can take in WebRTC and deliver it as pretty much any format. And you can easily create many different workflows with that, including the hybrid workflows like I was talking about, where you would you would have a stream coming in WebRTC or not that's delivered via WebRTC to a small subset of people. And then also have a effectively a stream target that you push out for you know, high scale HLS or dash delivery. So we could have like a, a chat like we're having right now via WebRTC and then send that out uh, for other people to view it, say via. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, maybe you want to have a panel discussion with four people and they're having a discussion and those people are having an interactive conversation. And then you're taking the results of that conversation and broadcasting it out. All right. Well, hey, thanks for chatting with me about WebRTC. I definitely appreciate it. For anyone who wants to take a look at some of our low latency options, as well as options with WebRTC, please check us out here at Wowza. Thanks again, Barry. Thanks, Justin. Take it easy.